repairing a Southworth 12 inch steam pump, part 11, making a brass lid for the mechanical lubricator and mounting the steam pump on a wooden stand in order to test it in a vertical position. When you buy this type of mechanical lubricator they come with a brass lid, but unfortunately in the same way as the slide valves the lid has gone missing, so I'm going to make a replacement. I found this piece of steel block so I thought it would be a good idea to machine it so then it could be used to form the shape for the lid of the mechanical lubricator. In this clip I'm using a quarter of an inch diameter end mill to cut the block to size. Why am I using a quarter of an inch end mill? Well that was already in the machine from a previous operation. Really I could have done to have fitted a bigger one. The stuff you saw me squirt on top of the block was some cutting lubricant. It's some I bought a while ago to see if it was any good. But to be honest, I find that my normal steam engine lubricating oil, or even better, steam oil, is fine for the job. Here's a good tip. When you're cutting in a position so that the chips have been flung at you, the operator, it's a good idea to use the bristles of a paintbrush to stop the hot chippings hitting you. And also, of course, the paintbrush is useful for sweeping away the chippings so you can actually see what you're doing. This sequence, as usual, is edited. It took a good bit longer than this to machine the block to the right size. This is going to be the last cut, and what I need to do once I've machined this block to the right size is round the edges. To round the edges, I will use my linisher or belt sander. This is not really a precision part, so using a linisher to round the edges is perfectly acceptable. In fact, I've done some of my best work using the one inch belt sander and the linisher. And once again, shaping parts on a linisher is very much a thing that you need to practice, but once you can do it, it's quite good. I found this piece of brass in my box of random brass bits. In the days before the pestilence, and of course before I moved to York, I would frequently visit Blackgate's Engineering to buy things. And I would often come out of there with a bag of brass offcuts which were on the counter. I would buy a couple of packs of brass offcuts because I found these very useful. This is quite a thin piece of brass, and what I'm doing is cutting the corners out with my pair of scissors. These are extremely old scissors, made in Sheffield originally, and I use them for cutting most things like sandpaper and metal, gaskets and paper even. Now I've cut out the corners, I can start shaping this piece of brass into a lid. The lids that you get with these mechanical lubricators are just pressed. I have a small hand press, but I don't have a die for it. The piece of brass is now in the vice jaws, but the jaws of the vice are not tightened because I don't want to mark it. First I bend one side and then the other. And this is about as far as I can go with the job using the vice jaws, that's why I machined the metal block. I can easily bend the opposite edges, but then I can't bend it any further. It's just not physically possible to bend the other two edges. Time now to enlist the help of the steel block that I machined earlier. This is clamped very tightly in the vice jaws and I'm using a hide faced hammer to get the final shape. I need to grind an area in the centre of one side to fit over the mechanism. And for this I'm using my very useful Proxon motor tool in the bench mount. After I've finished doing that I silver soldered the corners so as you can see the lid doesn't look too good now. But by using a flapper wheel in the bench mounted Proxon motor tool I can clean it up easily. Once I've cleaned up the lid, I've fitted it onto the lubricator. I haven't gone overboard with the polishing. I need the lubricator lid to match what is already there, and not be too shiny. Now it's time for a bit of wood bashing, with a couple of old pieces of plywood I found in the workshop, to make a test stand for the pump, because the pump will not stand upright without being bolted to something. I marked out the piece of plywood, drilled four holes in it and countersunkly underneath. I need this stand to be quite strong, so I'm sticking it together using super glue. I only use super glue because it's very quick drying. Normally for a job like this I would use PVA adhesive. After giving the wood a really good coating, I stuck another piece of plywood in a vertical position which in turn will be attached to the bracket holding the pump. But not until I've screwed the entire assembly together with really long screws. This part needs to be strong. At this stage of the repair, I do not want the pump to fall over and get damaged. Because I use super glue or cyanoacrylate adhesive, the job is usable immediately. I screwed the bracket to the upright piece of plywood, 
Note the use of two brass union nuts because the screws were a bit long and I didn't want them to stick out the other side. In this clip I'm half filling the lubricator tank with steam oil. It's pointless filling it to the top with steam oil because I will be emptying this before I post it back to the owner when it's finished. After half filling the lubricator I fit the cap to keep the dirt out. I'm now going to give the pump a water test. I've connected the two pieces of silicone rubber tubing with the copper inserts in the end and as you can clearly see the pump is totally self priming. It sucks the water from the container and pumps it back in. The silicone rubber tubing is a bit leaky at both the inlet and outlet but it's ok for this test. As you can clearly see in this clip the pump is totally double acting, pumping water at every stroke. At this stage I really am not happy with this pump, it's working but it's not 100%, more about this in the next episode. This was not the smartest idea I've ever had, I manually held a pressure gauge against the pipe, but the pipe blew off the pressure gauge at 40 pounds per square inch. I thought it would be a good idea to disconnect the water piping and wipe all the water away from the camera lens, although most of the water is on my t-shirt. But the good news is, I'm cooler than I was a few moments ago. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.